Darvin and I wanted to welcome all of our uh, media partners today. Thank you guys for coming. Um, exciting day to start off the 23-24 season. You know, I think back to, uh, you know, sort of February and the trade deadline. Obviously, uh, we collectively made some, some moves. Um, ended the season strong with one of the top, you know, defenses, one of the top overall records, you know, post trade deadline. We, we talked about that as being pre-agency, which sort of led us into this July, um, where our theme was continuity and bringing our group back that was a Western Conference Finals team and trying to improve around the edges. Um, we put in the work to affect that plan and execute that plan and um, especially proud that you know, five players really as part of free agency and extensions and AD and Austin and Rui and Vando and, and D'Angelo um, all chose the Lakers. We chose them and they chose us. And I think um, that that's a powerful statement that we have something significant going on here. And um, it's really centered around the work um, that that group's going to put in. Um, as we head into the season. I think we also had a goal of, of adding um, great players and talent that fit around the edges um, and kind of looking at Gabe Vincent and um, Cam Reddish, Torian Prince, Jackson Hayes, Christian Wood. Felt like those are um, really, really solid um, players to add to our core group with the consistency from last year. So. Um, we're excited, but we also know that what's going to matter the most going forward is the work that we put in and how we come together as a group. And I'm excited that starting Monday, Darwin gets to lead this group of players and have a training camp to develop and build on that continuity and consistency and competitiveness that he preaches. Um, so that's what today is kind of kicking off. Oh, go ahead. I'm ready for the questions. All right. Darvin, since we just got to hear that from Rob, I want to start with you from last year, just the, how much the roster has changed and how you had to kind of change on the fly. What have been your thoughts throughout the summer as you now have a, a group of guys that you know and are adding some pieces to that? And what, what kind of stands out for you as you approach the season? Just different ways we can take things to a, you know, even, an even higher level. Um, just to, you know, echo Rob's sentiments like, <clears throat> excuse me, the sustainability of bringing back, you know, the main part of our core and also adding to that. And uh, I think Rob used the phrase of not just going after star players, but players that star in their roles. I thought we did a phenomenal job uh, doing that, executing that. Um, again, in terms of the players we that returned and the players that signed extensions and the new guys we acquired. And the group has been great. It's been a great summer. The energy in the buildings have been great. You know, everybody's been working top to bottom um, just because they know, you know, it's, it's something special. We, we reestablished the competitive gene that this organization has been known for and not just known for it, but known for it at a high, high level. And so, uh, you know, in talking to our governor, Jeannie Buss, that was one of the biggest things I wanted to establish when I got the job is to get us back to being a formidable team night in and night out no matter who we're playing and just to re represent our way ourselves in a proper fashion so um i thought this summer everything we were able to do from the draft to free agency to the re-signings to the extensions it all you know poured into who we want to be starting day one and um, a lot of the preparatory work has been done in terms of you know creating that culture uh, uh just not creating it but sustaining the culture um and so i'm super duper excited about you know having these guys in the fold all together you know building that chemistry building that 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 continuity and uh being able to hit the ground running on day one and then rob uh, we were able to watch austin and kind of the steady rise especially throughout the postseason and then want to ask you though about team usa if you learned anything additional and just about kind of the importance of locking him in as a, as a part of the franchise next to LeBron and AD. Yeah, I think Austin's growth isn't a surprise to any of us that 
really scouted him, drafted him, and helped help develop him to this point. You know, he he uniquely has that sort of Mamba gene, um, where it's all about the work. It's about playing competitive on every play. It's about being a great teammate, um, not caring about the personal accolades, but just the team winning. Um, he exemplifies that, and, and his, his growth with Team USA, we're proud of him, um, but certainly not a surprise. I think he's got tremendous respect from other coaches around the league, other players around the league. Darvin and I spent some time around Team USA, and um, everybody praises him. And I think he doesn't let any of that get to his head. Uh, it doesn't get him off course. Um, he's focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's trying to bring another championship to this organization. So we'll, we'll lean into that type of character. That's a, that's a big part of what we're, what we're, as Darwin said, reestablishing and building here. Uh, of one for both of you, gentlemen, if that's all right. I'll start with Darwin. Um, LeBron's minutes came down last season from a season uh, prior to that, but still missed a close to 30 games because of his foot. How do you plan to manage him and his body, his workload in year 21? I mean, just that's, goes right into what's been said thus far in this press conference, like the continuity of building a well-balanced roster. It, it makes us more efficient in the way we manage him, and, and he's great at managing himself, um, all the resources he pours into making sure not, that he's not only available, but available at a high level. Now that we have top to bottom, what we feel like is a highly, highly balanced, skilled, athletic, younger team of guys who've logged a ton of NBA minutes. We can surround both he and AD uh, with these players who, who are coming in eager to contribute, eager to show that they can impact winning. And uh, that's going to allow us to be able to be more efficient with his game to game minutes, the big picture month to month, different sections in the calendar. Um, he was grandfathered in by the rest rules, so I was happy to see that. <laughs> but uh, so that's going to help as well. But you know, Bron, he he does a great job taking care of himself. And again, the team that that's around him now, the pieces that we have in place, uh, those guys are going to step up and do a lot of heavy lifting early. And Rava, if it's go big picture with you, last year's postseason run, you got eight wins halfway to the goal. Um, what do you think you addressed in order to, to try to accumulate another eight this postseason? Yeah, I think um, you guys can break down and look at the roster, but I think we were very intentional about uh, the versatility that this roster has, the depth that the roster has. Um, I think there's upgrades of spacing and shooting, you know, kind of top to bottom. Um, that was all done. As you pointed out, knowing LeBron's going into the 21st year, we have to be really, um, you know, we have to partner with him to um, help him get all the way to the end because that's his goal. And so I think adding the depth we had, the versatility, the shooting, all those things are going to help us manage that. Hi, Robin Darvin, good to see you. Um, question for both of you What did AD's offseason regimen entail? And, and with that, what's your expectation on how that will affect him from both a health standpoint and production standpoint. Good to see you, Mark. Um, you know, when AD came up for the extension, Darvin and I had, you know, great interactions with him. And the theme was, we want to commit to you, um, but we want you to commit to us. And one of the aspects that we addressed with him in that exchange was becoming a leader and being the hardest worker. Um, and he really did that this offseason. Um, I think probably some of you have seen some of the videos he posted. He was trying different ways to challenge himself, get his body better. Um, he's been in the gym working really hard with Coach uh, Gent, Chris Gent, um, and others. Um, training more this offseason than, than, than I've seen it w with him as a Laker. So he's taken on that leadership mantle. And um, I think he knows that when the franchise invests in him, like like we did this summer, um, he's going to return that. Um, that's just his character. That's who Anthony Davis is, and we're excited to see that. Again, just uh, the piggyback off Rob, just his the cross training that uh, you know he participated in, and just going through a summer, just not trying to, you know, to be to remain injury free, but but to actually dive into his body, came back leaner, stronger, quicker, more explosive. 
Um, and, you know, people forget for a player at his position, whether it's the four or the five, just a frontline player of his, his skill set and the magnitude of which he impacts the game, um, he's only 30 years old. And so uh, there's, there's, there's a huge, huge road still ahead of him in how he can lead this franchise and hopefully put some more banners up here. But I'm, I'm totally excited about him personally. Um, and, and the summer I personally witnessed him getting in the gym, as Rob mentioned, with, with CJ and his work with Ish and Chet, like it, it, it was, it's been, it's been great to see. And you, as soon as he walks in the room, you can tell and you notice it. So I'm, I'm excited for the type of year he's going to have. Guys, um, Darvin, just a couple housekeeping questions. One, um, are you expecting to have everybody available at the start of training camp health-wise? Yes, that is the anticipation. And, and are there positional battles that um, are going to happen? I mean, it seems like, you know, I think we could probably all guess at, at a chunk of the starting lineup, but is there stuff that's up for grabs as you go into camp? And, and what are you looking for as you try to fill in around, you know, D'Lo and Austin and, and LeBron and AD? Yes, definitely. I mean, that's why you bring guys in. The thing I, I want to avoid, though, is us competing, you know, mono a mono within the Fox. So it's a difference to the type of way you compete when you're amongst your family, when you're amongst the group. In that regard, I want us to compete, compete with our work habits. Like, I, I, I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, as a player, you come in with the mentality, like, I'm not going to let anyone outwork me today. And that's the tone I want to set. And in the process of doing that, we have to compete with how quick we can pick up the information, how great can we defend, how great can I, as an individual, be and execute what it is we're trying to do, whether it's transition defense, pick and roll defense, isos, defensive rebounding. I want to compete with that with, within that realm of having my competitiveness match right up with execution. And so, yeah, we, we're looking forward to a highly, highly competitive camp. I mean, we're two, three deep at every position now. And so uh, it's going to be some fun fun times to watch. And um, outside of that, I think uh, I'm not prepared to divulge who's going to be in the starting lineup just yet. So I know where you're going with that. You won't tell us 45 minutes before. Yet, no. so I wasn't expecting <laughs> it today. No, but no, I'm, I'm looking for a, a, a highly, highly competitive camp. And again, trying to, as soon as we can, pick up the information you know, the great thing is when Rob pulled the trigger on the deal, we got guys in the fold to his point. We had to learn on the fly a lot. But now, bang, we're here with a full summer, full training camp. So a lot of it is going to be corporate knowledge. And obviously, our new guys, we got to bring them up to speed as well. But And then once we all come out unified, whether it's a preseason game, a scrimmage, or playing against the rest of the 29 teams, that's when you're going to see us really form. And, Rob, and come together. Sorry, quick one for Rob. Um, we haven't spoken to you since the Christian Wood signing. Um, I think his talent, people know it around the league. What is it about this situation that you think can maybe maximize the things that he does well? And, and what were your conversations like with, with him about role and different things like that? The, the process around Chris was, um, w was actually a lot of fun for Darvin and I. Um, I think I spoke to his agent um, every other day for you know close to two months <laughs> and Darvin I think Chris mentioned it in the media the other day I think he and Darvin spoke or texted every day or every other day um, it was a process of discovery for us to get to know him um, Darvin had him early and when he was with the Bucks um, everything as part of that journey was actually incredibly positive um, Chris is a really articulate uh, very thoughtful kid. He thought deeply about the different opportunities he had. There were several contending teams that wanted to add him um, just because his skills are undeniable. Uh, you know, a seven footer that can spread, spread the floor. He's got length. He moves fluidly. Um, you know, just being down at LeBron's little mini camp in San Diego, seeing him on the court with Anthony Davis um, and just the length that those two guys have together. He's He's a phenomenal talent, and we've had some guys come through here um, and use our platform that we're proud have gone on to get what they deserve from other teams, like Dennis Schroeder last year came, had a great year, and, and got a new deal with the Raptors. Um, there's other stories, Malik Monk, um, where for cap reasons we couldn't keep those guys. Um, but I think Christian 
more than anything, believed in our team, our, our talent, our group of guys, and then Darvin um, as the head coach. And it was just a really, really positive process. And I'm, I'm super, super excited about the impact he's going to have on our winning this year. Yeah, I echo all of that. Like, he, he, uh, he and I go back a long ways from, you know, coaching him at, at GERD camps in Vegas in August and when he was just coming out of college, out of UNLV, to having him in Milwaukee and just staying in touch and constantly spending time with him along the way as I would bump into him when we were competing against whatever team he was on, be it Detroit, Houston, New Orleans. Um, he's a wonderful kid. I think he's a kid that's been kind of misunderstood. and. He uh, he understands that I'm a I'm gonna be consistent. I'm a, I try to pride myself on being a consistent human being every day, and uh, I think just that stability from myself, my coaching staff, everyone in the building, Rob, it's it's gonna help him. And he knows it's just the three step process. Like he I saw how he grinded through the G League and all of that, and worked his ass off to establish himself as a formidable NBA player. As an NBA player, then once he got his opportunity, he became a formidable NBA player. Now that last piece is he'll tell you he's never been to the playoffs. And he and I talked and said, now it's time for you to show that your stats that you put up and your impact can impact winning and winning at the highest level. So he's excited about that. He's excited. His teammates have totally embraced him. And I'm looking for you know a lot of big moments out of him this season. Uh, Two-part question for Darvin. Uh, speaking of Christian, there's been a lot of speculation about you guys playing more two big lineups with, with AD at the four. Uh, so one, how often do you envision playing those types of lineups? And then two, how do you see LeBron fitting into that? Because he's played more at the four and the five the last couple of years, not as much at small forward. So is that something more that you envision when he's off the floor? Or how, how do you see him kind of fitting in with that? Well, first I would say don't, don't put a, a number on Brian. He's going to tell you it's either playing at a low level or a high level, not at one, two, three, or four, or five. So he plays all of that. Um, and yeah, definitely that's what training camp is for, in my opinion. Like, we're going to tinker and, and, and entertain all different sorts of lineups, whether it's small ball, whether it's going big. You know, if we have Austin at the point or Torian at the two, Rui at the three, or Brian at the three, and Christian and AD, like we, 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 we it's, it's, it's been such a joy to come in and look at this team as it's currently constructed and just visualize all the different things we can do with it and the type of players that we have and people. Furthermore, like these guys are open for whatever we want to try and whatever they want to attempt, or we want to attempt to try to make work. So it, 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 through the course of training camp, I mean, we kind of already, it was already done at, at, at Bronze minicamp, um, just a variation of different combinations of players, uh, and that'll continue through training camp. And we'll land on what we need to land on, but we'll have several different lineups that we can throw at opposing teams for sure. Hey, Rob. Uh, perhaps nobody is more qualified than you to make the Mamba comparison and for you to say that Austin has the Mamba gene that obviously is a pretty uh, big thing to say. First of all, what made you, what makes you think that? And second of all, do you envision Austin having an even bigger role this season? I think his core qualities line up with, um, with you know, the tenants of the Mamba gene. You, you got, we all got to see Kobe's career and what he stood for, and no player can be compared to Kobe Bryant. But um, I think players today can carry genes of what he represented, and I think Austin does. He is no nonsense. He comes in the gym. He's about the work. He's straightforward with his teammates. Um, he's all about winning. Um, he doesn't listen to the praise and get big at it. He doesn't listen to the criticism and get down on himself. He's just about the work. And um, I think we saw that in just sort of how he attacked his college career when we talked to him and scouted him. We saw that when we had training camp and he didn't have a roster spot and he was about his business and he was about showing everybody on the team he belonged. Um, and we've seen that just with his growth, that he, he puts in the work. Um, he's not getting caught up in media rumors about who he's dating or <laughs> anything else, but he's, he's, he's about the business and he's about the game. And uh, that's why we love him, and that's why we're you know, proud that he chose us this summer. 
Hello, Rob. Hello, Darwin. Good to see you guys. You too, BT. Man, thank you. You sort of joked about the Brian being grandfather then when it comes to rest. What did you think of the new rules with this resting situation? And also for both you guys, how much you guys did you guys collaborate when it came to putting the team together? Uh, in terms of the first question, I mean, at the end of the day, we're in the business of basketball. It's not amateur sports. And the amount of money and resources that's being poured into teams and those teams pouring into these players, you know, the NBA, they, and I can't blame them. Like, they want to put out a high quality, consistent product. And so um, I think, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna call for <laughs> some teams to really, you know, make sure they have their T's crossed and their I's dotted. And um, that, you know, the fans, the people who pay the money that, that allow us to live these beautiful, wonderful lives, get what they paid their money to get. And, and that's to see their elite superstars available um, often um, on the TV, whether it's on, on, on the internet, television, cable television, um, live in the, in the building, whatever. People pay hard, their hard earned money to see a top shelf product. And so I understand it wholeheartedly and uh, it, it, it'll make it more fair and balanced, I think, because now it's just like, you got to have evidence <laughs> if a guy's in, you know, sitting out and, and you're trying to be strategic and, and trying to set yourself up to lose a game here, win a game here, trying to navigate playoff position or draft position, whatever the case may be. Now people have to really come out and be ready to show up and show out for the fans first and foremost. I mean, these people are working regular jobs. You know, we, we, we've been blessed. We're in the top whatever percentile, one percentile. And these people that's out here, your construction workers, your people that work in education, they're paying their hard on money. These tickets not, are not cheap. This, the memorabilia, the gear, all of that is not cheap. So the league wants their players, wants their product to be at an elite level and consistently shown and it's consistently available. So I can't fault them for that. I'll touch quickly on the, the new rules, I think. Um, we all know that we're in a changing landscape and when it comes to how consumers view live sports. Um, you know, the networks, regional sports deals, we're all following the things that are in the news. And um, we collectively, as, a, as, a, as an association, the NBA, we have to make sure we're maximizing our product and we know our fans want the stars to play. I think that's at the heart and spirit of the new rules and, and something we support. Um, I think in terms of players playing every game, one of the things that you know, we've talked about on competition committees is can we limit back-to-backs? That's something that we would support. Um, can we eliminate them completely? Can we make tweaks to this, the season to make it a little bit longer at both ends? You know, those, there's a lot of factors in those things, but I do think minimizing the number of back-to-backs will play into getting rid of players, um, you know, taking games off or resting. In terms of your question about how closely Darvin and I work together, I think, you know, we, we've been talking the last week about the, the buzzwords of, you know, sort of the difference between IQ and EQ. You know, we probably all talk to our friends and kids about those things, but we're so connected in terms of the decisions to build a roster, the, the smart part of it, the head part, do the pieces fit, but also the emotional part. How do these guys come together as a group? How do they bond together? How do they compete together? So. Um, we, we have constant collaboration around that, sort of how we format, build the team so that he has all the pieces he needs to, to coach him up. Oh, we were both working the phones, man, like crazy, going back and forth. It was fun, though. We had a good time. It went way quicker than what we anticipated. <laughs> that, just, that says a lot about the turnaround that took place last year. Also, like guys wanting to be here, like Rob said, t players choosing us. Um, whether it's our own players we're trying to bring back and extend um, players from that, you know, great, great pieces and support players from other winning teams wanting to come here with us. It's huge, but this guy right here, just you couldn't ask for a better right hand man. Coaches, uh, as part of the roster construction, um, 
you could look at that roster and there's 12 guys that can easily get playing time, can be a part of the rotation, just talks about the depth. Um, can you talk about just the strengths to have 12 different guys or even more that you can lean on and what are, I don't want to call it challenges, but um, balancing that with some of the players that you have and some of the new guys that came in? Again, man, just, just that period of discovery you go through that we've been going through the last couple of little months uh, specifically. Um, but once getting into camp, again, you know, throwing out different variations of lineups, um, it's, believe me, it's a great problem to have. <laughs> you can never have too many good players. And, you know, everyone is not going to be happy with their, their minutes. And, you know, that's just, a, that's just a reality of professional sports, regardless of what sport it is, and particularly in the NBA, you know, especially when we have a team that's deep like ours, full of very highly capable players. Um, you know, we'll, we'll look at what we need to see on film, in practice, preseason games, and we'll go from there. Um, I'm just excited about the fact that we have guys who are high character guys who are going to buy into what the overall goal is. And that's how you, you, you temper the individual frustrations with a uh, lack of playing time or no playing time. You know, there's only 240 minutes in the game. And so um, it, 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 we're going to navigate through it. But again, as long as our sole fo focus is on whether I'm in 30 minutes, 13, three, no minutes, how am I pouring into the group? We saw that with Lonnie Walker last year. You know, he didn't get down on himself. He stayed professional. He stayed with a good spirit. And he helped us win a huge game that led to us winning a series. So as long as our goal, we are all have both hands on the rope pulling in the same direction, you know, we'll be able to navigate any little frustration. I'll just add to that quickly. I think one of the themes for that Darvin and I have talked about for this group of guys, and we'll kick this off in the in the theater on Monday when we all get together. Um, you know, if you want to get to June, October to June is a long stretch, and I know everyone's quick to make judgments. Oh, this guy's going to play 25 minutes. This is the eighth man. Here's the fifth man, and running all the analytic models. I I get that and appreciate it. But, but that stretch of time, there's, there's room for everybody to contribute in a huge and major way if you stick together and if you take the long game. Um, you know, if you make snap judgments and after two weeks you're like, oh, man, I'm not getting the minutes, I'm out of the rotation, I'm going to give up, I'm going to get negative thoughts, I'm going to you know, not be with the group, Darwin won't allow that. That's just not part of being connected. And, uh, but I think in terms of the talent we have, when you look at an eight- or nine-month journey, Everyone's going to get a chance to eat. Darvin, when, when you have LeBron and AD, you're championship-driven, obviously, every year. And you said all the right things last year about winning at the highest level. Does it feel more achievable now, as you sit here at this time this year, than when you spoke last year, given all you went through last season and what you were able to accomplish this summer? You know, the biggest thing about last year was <clears throat> going through that process of the season was just coming to work every day with a consistent spirit of positivity, productivity, and, and really getting the team to, to, to lock in on, let's get better collectively at something. Even if it's just one thing, whether it's a film only day, whether it's a shoot around, a practice, uh, whatever the case may be, individual day, you know, we wanted to collectively make sure we got better at something that's going to immediately, immediately translate to us having success on the floor. That doesn't change going into this year. And I told the guys plenty of times throughout the summer, and it's basically the same message I had last year, we're only going to go as far as our daily work takes us. And, and I'll repeat it, we're only going to go as far as our daily work takes us. You know, for the paper to look like one thing, there has to be a, a huge amount of work, patience, it's going to be a process to Rob's point. It's, an, it's October to June. That's a long stretch. So everyone has to come in with that daily being in a moment mentality of trying to get better, not just individually, but collectively at something at each and every day. And so uh, I'm excited. Like we were laughing upstairs, like expect, people talk about, you know, you have ex expectations. Well, since I was five, six years old, I had expectations when I said I wanted to be, if you want to be a fireman when you grow up, 
there's your expectations. Now they're going to expect something of you, a doctor, a lawyer, no matter what you choose, what route you choose in life, you're going to have expectations. And to me, that's living. If you don't have any expectations around you, you're just existing. Like, I want to live. And, and I came here for those expectations. I've been a part of teams as a player and coach that had expectations. You don't run from it. You just embrace it. Yeah, Rob, the, the 2020 championship team wasn't kept together, held together the way this team was. Has your approach changed or did the situation change? Yeah, I think, um, I think Bill, every, every off season, every season you go through um, is, you know, it's a process of learning and discovery. I think any championship executive in any sports has done some things perfectly and has done some things where they've taken a risk and it hasn't worked out. I think your job as an executive or any sports executive is if you take a risk and it doesn't work out the way that you thought, you've got to fix it. And I think, thankfully, as a group, collectively as an organization, we obviously took a risk. We changed the, the way our roster was constructed. It didn't work, but we fixed it. And that's our job. And um, I'm grateful that you know together we were able to get it right get it right last year and, and hopefully improve on that going into this year. Darvin, I got two for you. You mentioned Christian Wood having him, you know, earlier in his career and in your career. Just how have you seen him grow? What ways have you seen him grow the most, you know, since he first came in the league to now? I mean, just just from watching afar, um, just, you know, how his, his the way he impacts a game, his versatility, um, that people try to knock him for his defense, but the the kids, he blocks shots. Uh, he tries to buy in since I've had him. You know, I'm not one to go off of others' opinion to, to develop my own. Like, I got to see it in front of me. And the times I've been with him, he's done nothing but try to execute whatever he was being taught, whatever um, coach was trying to put down to him when I was around him. So I, I just thinking about that and knowing what type of presence he can have, how versatile he is, whether it's he's playing the five or four or three even, just because of his ability to score at all three levels. And again, his length, his athleticism, his quickness. Um, you can throw the ball to him, the offense breaks down with six, five, four, he's going to make some positive happen. So, And then again, the, the personal connection we have and the type of person he is and how he knows I'm going to deal with him. Um, on an all up and up level, um, I think he's going to be a huge, huge, uh, huge asset for us once again. You know, it's interesting because Darwin and I were talking upstairs about you know it's it's easy to overlook, but Christian Wood's 27. You know, it, we yeah. were going down the list. Gabe Vincent's 27, Delo's 27, uh, Vando's 24, Austin's 25. Um, you know, these, these these guys have a lot of growth left still I mean we have a we talked about the versatility and depth of the roster but it's also young and I'm excited to see how some of these guys improve and grow what's the second part of the question I'm sorry <laughs> no, I'll go. The, the other question unrelated to Christian you guys have four guys who were on the training camp roster last year who've returned it was Austin uh, Max Christie LeBron and AD everybody else nobody else went through camp with you guys last year just how does that change maybe how you approach this year's camp versus maybe last year's I mean, I think uh, obviously there'll be some things that we try to um, tighten up a little bit more as a staff. Uh, but having said that, you know, my staff is, I'm nothing without my staff. You know, CJ, Phil, Jordan, Skyler, JD, ZP, Micah, everyone, you know, our G League staff has been here, Dane Johnson. It's providing a lot of support for us with just make sure we have enough available bodies to make sure we execute the drills and whatnot that we need to try to teach on both sides of the ball. But um, all throughout the summer, like guys want to work on their game. We make it to where they get the opportunity to work on their game, but also they start to develop that corporate knowledge of the terminology on defense different spacing and different cuts and different angles that we want to play out of offensively. And so uh, it's kind of been seeds being planted throughout the summer, throughout the off season. And now, you know, we get to do it for real next week. And we have, you know, some high IQ guys. So, and along with Brian and AD's leadership, and um, again, the guys that were here last year that finished up the season, that went through the playoff run, 
you can see those guys being more vocal now and, and, and everyone asks questions. I don't shut it down. My coaches are allowed to coach. You know, I don't, I'm not the only voice. I don't want to be the only voice. Obviously, obviously, I'm the last final decision maker with, with, with the team matters. But at the end of the day, I want my guys to coach and be empowered. And, and so uh, they do a phenomenal job of that. So we, with, with all those hands on deck, everybody, again, everybody not just on the court, but in the building, pushing for us to really figure things out on a day-to-day -day basis to the best of our ability is going to carry us to where we need to go. Hi, Rob. Hi, Darvin. Chris Rich. Nice to see you I both. Uh, quick two for you, uh, Darvin. You guys have mentioned that you are largely able to run it back this season, but still wanted to improve along the edges. What specifically in the game do you want to see improved upon from some of those role players? Just our ability, again, to make shots. It's a make or miss league. I mean, we defend it as, as, as about, about as well as you could. And, and so to get guys in, that, that are, have the reputation and skill set and know how to not only make shots, but make them in big moments. That was huge for us. Um, and again, Rob mentioned everyone's age, like getting younger and more athletic. Hopefully it helps our transition defense. Um, that, was, that was a sore thumb for us in the postseason. So trying to get our off, uh, transition defense together, trying to be better on the defensive glass, you know, play even faster when we have the opportunity to. Uh, we'll be able to play at different speeds, but for the most part, we want great space, great pace. And so um, I think all of that, you know, just, just again, just looking at the different ways we can maintain our defensive competitiveness and intensity, what we were able to do to finish out the year, and also, you know, offensively. And I think the, the weaponry that we brought in, you know, Brian and AD have a lot more space. Um, and there will be a lot more available shots if teams want to double or triple team or crowd those guys. And then last question. This, is a, this isn't a team that you're going to see a lot in the regular season, but just your initial thoughts on the Dame trade and what does it do to raise the competitiveness, not just in the East, but in the league? I mean, it is what it is. My only concern is Laker business. No. Hi, how are you? Uh, yeah, the question to Mr. Perinka. Uh, what's your expectation for Rui this season and for Coach Ham? Um, you talk about you're going to use several different lineup. So um, will Rui's assignment change this season? You know, what's going to be like? I think, uh, you know, watching Rui come here sort of after the trade, felt like a you know sort of personal renaissance for him he just came alive as a player again um, and he parlayed that this off season with um, really uh, incredible work he uh, spent most of his time training with LeBron um, I think that was really intentional um, and I know the coaching staff the front office in the in the days where we've had some individual work in here um, he's playing with an extremely high level of confidence and belief. Um, I think his his strength and athleticism look like they're at a different level. Um, I think we got a taste. Uh, he shot over 40% in the playoffs. Um, you know, he's a consistent elite shooter. Um, but I think he's just literally hitting the takeoff uh, of, of the flight he's going to go on. So really, really excited. Um, that he's in such a great place and has put in the work to to have a huge year. Yeah, Rui, I, I second that completely. Like Rui is uh, become, <laughs> we were laughing. This Brian calls him his understudy, so it's uh, he's been with him to Rob's point and from the visuals and the communication. Like he's been with him all summer um, as much as possible, and I think that's a great thing. Um, you know, he's setting himself up to not just have a long career, but a long career at an extremely high level. And in terms of how he'll be used, um, you know, that's the, again, we, we have a team full of Swiss Army knives. <laughs> so he, he's another player that can play multiple positions, that can score at three levels, that's strong, physical, um, that made huge leaps and bounds defensively last year. As you saw at Denver series, we were able to throw him on Jokic some. Um, I, I, I expect nothing but big, big, big things from Rui this year. You know, he's still a young player. He still have different levels he can go to, and he's already at an extremely high level. So um, we'll figure it out, but he'll definitely be deep in the mix.
Rob, when the when the season ended, LeBron had just kind of sat in front of all of us and mold about his basketball mortality in a way that I don't think any of us had ever heard him. Uh, um, being around him this summer and speaking to him, in what ways did you kind of see the fire relit? And, and I, I assume you've seen it. Um, I don't know. Have you seen his? Does he seem refreshed in any in any ways? I would answer that with one word: preparation. Um, you know, just it's 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 staggering for a player that um, has 20 years, you know, under the hood already and is preparing for 21 like he's a rookie. Um, I think he's been doing, you know, six a.m. workouts, probably been in our building as much as any player this offseason, um, been in the weight room as much as any player. Um, I think every team LeBron's played for, it's pretty uniform that um, his work sets the tone. and. There has been nothing but an increase in, in seeing that here. So to me, it's, it's let's be about it. Let's not talk about it. And he's definitely been about it this offseason. And I think that, that really puts kind of the spirit in our entire group to see him preparing that detailed and working that hard. Uh, Appreciate the chance for another question. Uh, getting back to Mark's question about Anthony Davis, obviously you spoke about the franchise's commitment to him and his commitment to, you know, that what that mantle uh, will involve moving forward. He wins the championship in year one, and there were some kind of you know difficult times that followed. What did you see out of him last year, Rob, that made you feel confident about having him be the guy moving forward? Character, character, character. Um, we as an organization, Jeannie, Darvin, myself, we, we believe in the character of Anthony Davis, just the person he is. Um, nobody in life can prevent, you know, health stuff from happening unexpectedly. It's, we're all human, we're all subject to that. Um, but we can carry ourselves with character and Anthony Davis stands for that. And um, I think last year, Jeannie said in an interview, you could argue he's one of the best two-way players in the world, or was at times. And we think that at 30 years old, he's heading into the peak of his career. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to bet on who he is and his character and expect him to be a leader to, to help us reach our ultimate goal. And I'll say to Mitch, if there's anyone that didn't get to ask a question that wants to, we, we want to make sure everyone has a chance. Could I just follow with Darwin real quick? Um, you nicknamed him Wilt last year. Um, yep. What more can you do to get even more Wilt-like results out of AD? Man, just put him in a position to succeed, empower him, you know, and, and encourage him to lead the leadership. I think everyone in this building, everyone on his team, all of his teammates, they want him to be that guy, you know, including Brian. Like, like it's and it, the thing with Brian is he's probably one of the most selfless superstars we've had ever. In, in all of sports and whether it's, you know, talking about how we're going to manage him and manage this, he wants other guys to step up and AD being at the top of that list, as we all do. And we believe wholeheartedly in him. I can agree more with Rob when he says, you know, just the character of AD, you know, him pushing through moments where he may have played it safe and went back and, and not being able to finish a possession, finish a quarter, finish a game, whatever. I saw him push through a ton last year. And it's, it's something that he and I talked about when I first got the job. We talked about throughout the course of the season. And now to see the type of work he's put in on his body, on himself, um, there's no doubt in my mind that, you know, he'll be, term, he'll be returning in even better form to, to sustain a heavy load. Darvin, uh, D'Angelo came in last year and, and had some really great games. You know, was a key contributor to you in a lot of, lot of games down the stretch. There are other games where he wasn't as effective and wasn't in your game playing quite as much. What do you want to see from him training camp, early season, now that he has a full training camp? He mentioned that several times, that having a training camp would be huge for him. What do you want to see from him, and what can he do to get even better and more consistent? Just again, the constant, he's been great with his communication all summer, um, especially when he's, when he's gotten back in the market around the guys. Um, just seeing him in workouts, seeing him in little pickup games, how he's talking, he's vocal, he's encouraging the new guys, he's talking through things with Brian and AD. They had a couple of workouts together, just the three of those guys. 
So, you know, just him to continue to be vocal. <clears throat> and, you know, a lot was made about the way things finished against Denver or whatnot. But at the end of the day, we don't get to where we got to without D'Angelo Russell. He's our, I'll give you one, Dan. He's our starting point guard. <laughs> He's our starting point guard. And I'm going to encourage him to be assertive. He's a highly, highly intelligent basketball player. Um, one that was coming back with sort of a chip on his shoulder because, <clears throat> again, we, we, he chose us. We believe in him. And he, he, he's one of those guys that has a ton of pride and passion about not only his individual performance, but those of his teammates as well. He, he's one of the biggest supporters of his, of his teammates. So I look for all of that in D'Lo, and I think he's another one that's going to have an outstanding season. I'll just add to that. I remember Darvin and I sitting in our exit meeting with D'Angelo, and um, it was coming off the emotional, you know, obviously Western Conference Finals. You lose to the champions, and he didn't, he didn't get a chance to play as much in that series. And, you know, we talked about it. We said, listen, from the time the trade happened until the end of the Denver series, I said, let's look at it as a great honeymoon. And you can go on a honeymoon with your significant other, and you can have 13 incredible days, perfect days. And if lunch on the 14th day isn't <laughs> as good as you want it to be, it doesn't mean it wasn't an incredible trip. So we want to keep the bigger picture with him of that he, he came here, he impacted our season in a huge way, led us into the playoffs, led us you know, to beat, beat the defending champs and the Warriors was a big part of that playoff series. And I will say um, his offseason has been quietly really impressive. Um, he's really carrying himself with a confident spirit. He's been a vocal leader on the court and kind of the, the, the workouts that have go, been going on with his teammates. Um, and it looks like he was very intentional, too, about just taking care of his body and adding a little bit of shoulder strength. Um, I think you guys will see he's bumping guys off their line, getting into his kind of fadeaway package. and. Um, D'Angelo's in a really, really good headspace. Uh, Rob, I think the trick on a honeymoon is to get the glitches out of the way at the start. Good and point. Then you have to... <laughs> good point. <laughs> but I do, I do want to ask Darvin. I mean, you've had a head, you've you've had a year under your belt as a head coach. What changed this summer? Is your approach any different at all than it was? What what sort of things did you learn that you're applying now and as you go into year two? It's funny because I mean. I really enjoy the hell out of talking to this guy, man. We always, not only do we work together, we laugh a lot, we strategize a lot, but we have good times on our one-on-ones. And the biggest thing for me was delegating responsibility. And, and, and you know, I, I came in last year with a set plan, knowing who I needed around me in terms of my staff, how we were going to implement this plan and to push through with it. And, but the also coming into this year, the pull back, a little bit um, and not lose any intensity or, or, you know, any decisiveness, but just allow, I have great coaches on my staff and allow them to grow. You know what I mean? It, it's a big part of what I've seen in my travels as an assistant all the way up to now is the best coaches, the Mike Browns, the Mike D'Antonis, the Mike Buds, they allow those guys that's working under them the, the, you know, the opportunity to grow and, and enhance themselves by doling out more responsibility to those guys. And so uh, that was the biggest thing for me, to allow CJ to do more, allow Phil to do more, to allow Jordan, Skyler, JD, all these. JD Coach Summerlee did a phenomenal job with our young guys and some of our G League guys. So the biggest thing for me was just, again, delegating responsibility, us sitting down as a group, putting our heads together, coming up with a more, even more enhanced plan, building off what we did last year so we can come down and hit the ground running so I know whether I'm here or I'm away that everything is being executed properly. Is that I'll, I'll just okay. add to your question real quick. I think um, just getting to go, go through last season with, with Darvin, I uh, – I had to go back to the Basketball Hall of Fame uh, for Powell's induction, which was an honor for the Lakers to support and be a part of. And as we know, in that class was was Greg Popovich, and he he was at one point in his speech kind of joking about, "Hey, you know, how much can you do as a coach? Like we all run a pick and roll and space the floor pretty much the same." He said, "At the end of the day, it's it's how you relate to your players. Like that's so so important." And sitting next to Darvin, I think he's the best in the business at that. Um, 
for him to take a group um, where we started the way we did and keep the belief alive and to be able to relate to the players is really something that's special and doesn't happen a lot in sports. And I think it emanates because he's so genuine with the guys. He's really he's willing to have great conversations to celebrate a moment, but he's also willing to have the hard conversations to be honest about something that's difficult to talk about. Um, and that's really at the fabric of who we are and I think was a big part of our success and our excitement about this season. And thank you for giving us a little extra time. Uh, from a point of view of basketball, uh, you had Dwight Howard a few years back. You had Brooke in Milwaukee and thinking Jokic in mind. Uh, do you have that kind of archetype of a traditional center on the roster? And if, if so, uh, describe who would fill that. And if not, why, why don't you need that? Well, I, I think, you know, having those type of players, it, it's definitely um, a, a really nice resource to have. But if your roster is not constructed that way, then it's also good to have a guy like AD who's when, you know, he's out there and he's doing what he does is probably arguably one of the top five best defensive players, two-way players, but specifically defensive players in our league, the way he can cover ground, stay in front of smalls, block shots at the rim. Uh, we, we signed Jackson Hayes, although he's not as, you know, thick and, and, and heavy as those other guys you mentioned. He's also fast, athletic, you know, he can protect the rim. Christian Wood shown uh, a, a knack for blocking shots and protecting the rim. So. If you don't have those big girthy guys like that, maybe you just get one nice size guy and put a whole bunch of athletic, strong, six seven to six nine players around them to build sort of a fortress and guys are gonna make multiple efforts. And so I think that prototypical prototypical big, 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 uh, you know, outside of Jokic, Embiid, um, Nurkic, a couple other guys like I think the NBA is 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 transitioned sort of out of that, you know, by way of Golden State, and you know, it, it, the way the game is played and defended, in particular, it, it, it's changed so much over the years. So, you know, Jokic and obviously Embiid and those guys, they're gonna make you, you know, have to consider how you're gonna guard them and what you're gonna throw at them. That's that's for sure, but. You know, you look at guys like AD and Giannis and these type of players at that position where it's like, okay, like what do we do with that? And so we feel comfortable with what we have. We, we have guys that can play bigger than their size and they're already 6'8", 240, 6'9", 250. And um, I think I prefer the speed, the athleticism and the versatility over just one big player that you're – basically have for one or two players around the league and then when that player is not playing then they're not playing like I, I prefer it the other way uh, Darvin follow up on on Austin you said in an interview earlier this summer that you think he has all-star potential sooner than later um, how do you envision his role growing the, this season and um, you know could that all-star potential uh, I guess unfold th this year I man, I couldn't be more proud of that kid, man. He uh, he's fearless. I, I believe every word that I've mentioned and said about him. Um, just his, his humbleness and just just a low key guy, you know. Uh, fun to be around, a worker who just absolutely loves the hoop. I think the world got a chance to fall in love with him this summer. I know they didn't do as well as they wanted to, but. At the end of the day, an experience like that, playing against these other countries and playing on a world stage and, you know, traveling country to country, continent to continent, um, and, and, and really making an impact within a collection of really high-level basketball players and him being one of the ones that, were, that was heavily relied upon. And, um, and he showed up and, and showed and proved. And so... Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled for what's in front of him. Again, he chose us. We, we feel great about where he is as a player, what he represents for our organization. Um, he'll grow into a leadership response with his, he'll grow within those leadership responsibilities as well. Um, and yeah, he'll be our starting two guard too, Dan. Austin Reeves, see. That you got two out of five. I'm, that's all I'm giving you, two out of five. 
Yeah. Uh, that other three are up for grabs, yeah. <laughs> Um, you guys talked about the youth. Um, was that a thought process with you guys, is getting some younger guys? Because you have a lot of guys, you know, some more guys are 25 and under two as well. You know, you have Jackson Hayes, Cam Reddish, two guys that were top 10 picks. Then you have Max Christie who played well in Summer League. What was the thought process with that? Was development a thought process in mind too as well with the young guys? Yeah, it's a great question. I think we've had a, a really successful track record here of you know, finding guys, developing them, and um, we have a number of those in the system now. Um, Max Christie was obviously at Summer League, a standout. He's really putting in the work. Um, I think drafting Jalen hood Shafino and, and Maxwell Lewis, you can see these guys. Um, but I think to have a, a young core like we do now, plus uh, a really good group of guys that are going to be that next group, um, we feel like, you know, we're in a position to have a really, really competitive team but to also have young players and developing players. So it's kind of the best of all worlds. Hey, um, I guess. Um, another new wrinkle this season is the uh, in-season tournament. Um, just wondering how much thought you've put into how you might navigate that, um, how incentivized do you think your team will be um, when competing in it, and what the kind of internal conversation amongst the players and team has been about the, the tournament. I'll be quick. I mean, I, listen, at the end of the day, we all understand that the NBA is a business and we're trying to maximize revenues that the players and the teams can split. And um, the NBA season is a big part of having a new property that I think our fans are going to really be excited about and embrace. And uh, we want to attack that like anything with the winning spirit. I agree. I mean, just any time you can, you know, uh, infuse a competitive environment into what it's already a competitive environment, um, and with there being ex incentives as well um, on a financial level, I think it's great. It's going to be great for the fans. I think anytime you give these NBA players a chance to go compete for something, you know the antennas kind of go up. And um, I'm looking forward to it. And, and one of the beautiful things about it is also just it, it doesn't, you know. Certain games will have that tournament emphasis on it, but it, it's not like you're having to stop the season and play an additional 15, 20 games. Like, things are going to be normal. It's just certain games are going to mean that, you know, going to be for tournament seating and whatnot. So it's, I think it's going to be great. I can't wait to see how it unfolds.